Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm finally doing a tag I've been wanting to do for a while, and that's the Realistic Makeup Collection tag. I saw this from Christina Chang, and I believe this was originally a tag that was like a collab between Georgia Harris and Lacey of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. I'll have all of those videos and channels linked down below. But essentially, this is basically a tag where you go through your collection, and you really pare it down to what a realistic collection would look like and I interpreted that to be like one of each product that you would reach for like every day. So I've got my little makeup bag here and I've got all of my products that I could realistically see myself using every day and then only purchasing like a new product in each category once I ran out. I interpreted the tag that way because I remember a conversation I had with an old co-worker of mine at my old job and I was talking about this eyeshadow palette I really wanted and I was going to order as soon as it was available because it had been like sneak peeked or something and I was showing it to her because she also liked makeup. I did uh, give her a couple of highlighters that were too dark for me because she did have a deeper complexion so we bonded every now and then over makeup because she also loved makeup but she wasn't really into YouTube. And I showed her this eyeshadow palette and I was like, I can't wait to get it. It's so awesome. I can't wait. And then she said, oh, I would get that, but I already have one. And I was like, you already have this? And she said, no, I already have an eyeshadow palette and I'm going to finish that before I buy another one. <laughs> and my mind exploded. I was like, whoa, people view makeup like that? Because <laughs> I would say even in like my first eyeshadow palette video, I think I, f I bought two. When I bought my first palette from Sephora, I bought two of the little nine pan Too Faced palettes. So I don't think I've ever owned just one eyeshadow palette before, but that really made me think. And so I, that's kind of the headspace I was going into when I put together this collection. Also, I'm only three products away from this all being drugstore, which really surprised me. So this isn't entirely drugstore. I really want to take this and dupe out those three or four products and make this a drugstore makeup starter kit, which is something I've always wanted to do, but I never thought I knew enough and had enough experience and tested enough products in order to actually put one together. But I really think I can do that now. So if you do see a drugstore makeup starter kit come out in the future, odds are it'll be majority of these products and I'll just be subbing out the higher end products that I'm going to mention today. Because this is like my personal, like if I had to pare down, knowing what I know now, pare down my collection to what I would just use every day realistically, these are the products. So I'm gonna try to go in order. We'll see how well that goes. Uh, and by in order, I mean the order in which I would apply them to my face. So the first product in this is going to be a primer. And this is one of my favorite primers of all time, the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This one is actually completely new because I was able to pick up like two of these from their website and I finally finished panning the first one that I owned. So this one's a brand new one I pulled from my makeup backup drawer, which is like the bottom drawer in this container right here. This is just such a great all over face primer. It works well with all of my favorite foundations and it really does minimize the look of pores. If you missed it a while ago, I did do a head to head video of this versus the Tatcha and I liked the way this one performed better. So I had to include this in my realistic collection. The next product is a foundation that I would use every single day, and that is from Catrice. This is the HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. This is in the shade 030 Sand Beige. At this point, it is too dark for me, so I would be lightening it with a product I'm going to talk about next. This is such a good foundation for combination skin. It's very liquidy, but it's very, like high medium low full coverage and you can build it up to complete full coverage if you want to it's super affordable they just expanded their shade range as well because i did do a whole video on just this foundation and i was going to talk about how bad their shade range was and then they expanded their range so i adore this i buy this like three at a time because they're like six or seven dollars at ulta so i have two backups of this <laughs> i just finished panning one this is a new one that i've had open for about a week now and i can definitely see myself using this until it was gone and then repurchasing it the next product is a concealer and again a drugstore and this is from makeup revolution this is the conceal and define full coverage concealer this is the super size version they had a regular version which had about a third the amount of product as this one 
I believe this one now has the amount of product that Shape Tape does, and it's still less than $12. So I have the shade C6, and I can use that under my eyes if I want to spot conceal, which I haven't been doing a whole lot of lately. I haven't had really bad breakouts. I've just been breaking out a bit over here, one on like in between my eyebrows, and then I've actually been dealing with like a dry spot down here, which has kind of been annoying me. But I haven't been spot concealing that much, so I've really been reaching just for the C6 to use under my eyes. I adore this concealer. <laughs> Full coverage, it just looks great under my eyes. It covers up the dark bags that I have. I have fine lines under my eyes, so most 99% of things will crease, but this doesn't look that bad on my fine lines, especially at the end of the day, because when you first apply a concealer, for the most part, it looks nice and smooth. It's how it looks at the end of the day with my fine lines. That really proves the point and this one's amazing now to set the face i would use my favorite loose powder that i've already panned this is from maybelline and this is the fit me loose powder i have the shade 10 fair light i can't remember if this is the lightest shade or not it's been a while since i've actually used this because i've been panning a couple of other loose powders but this is my favorite <laughs> favorite affordable loose powder of all time it rivals the um Laura Mercier for me because I did use those two at the same time and I liked this one better. This one also has a great shade range, available in the drugstore, available in Target, whatnot. Great. To set the rest of my face, I do like using powder, so I will use my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. I've panned a couple of these by now. I have a couple in the shade 004 uh, Sandstorm, which used to be my shade like in the summer slash fall. I am pale as hell right now, so <laughs> um, the shade that I can use right now is 001 Transparent, which is more of like a translucent kind of sheer powder. But once it gets closer to the summer months, which we're practically there, I'll be reaching for this shade again. This is an amazing powder. The only annoying thing is the packaging, but you can depot this fairly easily if you use the flat iron heat method. It comes out pretty easily, and then you can throw it in any Z palette to use. Oh my god, I totally forgot to talk about the white mixer that I mentioned. So, my favorite white mixer for foundations, which has been like an essential item for me for the past couple of months, is from LA Girl. And now they have two different kinds, and I really don't know if there's a huge difference because I've been testing both of them. The first one is their Pro Coverage HD Long Wear Illuminating Foundation, and they just had this foundation in the shade white, so it's plain white foundation. I've been mixing this into the foundations for a few months, and I haven't seen any change to the actual formula, texture, or anything of those foundations when I've mixed this in. So this has been really great. It's less than a fluid ounce though, it's 0.95 fluid ounces, and this is $7.99 at CVS, which is where I always buy it. I tend to go through this pretty quickly if I'm using it every day, which I have been because I've been pale and using foundations a bit too dark for me. The last time I went to pick up a new one of those, because I've gone through quite a couple of them, I found this. So they actually came out with a whole line of actual foundation mixing pigments and they do have a white one so this is the la girl pro color foundation mixing pigment just in the shade white this is a dollar more than that other foundation but it is a full fluid ounce and this is like a glass bottle so i've been testing out this one as well and i really don't see as a huge difference i really don't see any difference at all between these two so i guess that's really just your preference over would you like a fluid ounce in a glass bottle or would you like a kind of a big bulky plastic bottle and do you want 0.95 fluid ounces? The difference in price is a dollar. So to me, it's a bit negligible, especially because I can use coupons at CVS and use my extra bucks and, you know, all that good stuff. So I would recommend either of these. I think it would be great for everyone to have in their arsenal a lightening foundation that way if you go to the drugstore you go and you know you might not get your perfect shade match i would recommend just going darker with a shade you know is your correct undertone that way you can just lighten it up and you got it and then even then you're extending the length of that foundation because you're mixing in the white mixer all right so next we're getting into some higher end products i really wanted to pick a face palette that I could reach for personally every day because I know when I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm in a rush, I either go to my Everyday Z palette, which is basically my own created everyday palette, or I reach for a nice face palette. And the face palette that I picked is from Smashbox, and this is the Ablaze face palette. 
I had kind of a, a shitty video <laughs> on this back when my lighting wasn't that great, so I don't know if I want to link that because it you can barely tell. I look very washed out. But this is an amazing face palette. So it's about this big. You've got a huge mirror in here. And inside you have two big highlighters, two peachy blushes, and then a bronzer and a contour. So this is basically everything I would need to make an everyday face. I love peachy blushes. They are kind of like my year-round go-to blush. I'm not a huge fan of like red blushes or like hot pink blushes. So these are like my perfect tones right here. My only gripe with this palette is that I really wish that they had switched the pan sizes of the blush and the highlighter. Because I feel like I would rather have a big blush pan so I could like really swirl my brush in there and then have a small highlighter pan because my highlighter brush is a lot smaller. But overall, I love this palette and it basically is everything that I need to do the rest of my face. I did cheat a bit and I did bring in one or two extra multitasking products that I know that I would reach for. So the first one is a highlighter technically, but you could also use it as eyeshadow. You can also use it for many other things. This is the Physicians Formula Shimmer Strips in the shade Natural Nude. Now this is a whole multicolored strip of just shimmers, like the name would suggest. You can use this as eyeshadow. You can use this as highlighter. It is a very beautiful highlighter depending on where you swatch from. This was one of the first products I ever bought for my makeup collection and I still go back to it. This was actually in my makeup backup drawer again back there and I pulled it back out because I really wanted to use it again and it is just so versatile. I do have an eyeshadow palette a little bit later in this collection but I couldn't pass up the chance to bring in something from the drugstore that was really affordable and also versatile because that's kind of what you're looking for in a realistic collection. You need things to do more than just what they can do. So I wanted to bring that in as an option. I also wanted to bring in as an option just one more blush. This one's also from the drugstore and this one's kind of a classic here on YouTube. This is the Milani blush in Luminoso and this is the baked powder blush and this it's just a gorgeous blush. This is kind of more for like a, a glam, um, a special occasion kind of look but I couldn't resist bringing this in. It is gorgeous. It gives you just the greatest like flush and it gives you a glow with it as well. Uh, and it helps that it's like the peachy like color that I love in blushes. So I couldn't resist including this in here because I know that I would want to reach for something a bit more glowy because both of the blushes in the Ablaze face palette are more matte leaning. I know this one does have a little bit of shimmer in it, but it's not nearly as much as the Milani one. So after all of that, I would then move on to eyebrows. So I really want to talk about multitasking again because the eyeshadow palette that I picked does have a black shade in it and that's what I would use for my brows. So I want to save the eyeshadow palette for a bit later, but once I did my brows, I would set it with a clear brow gel. Now, a brow gel that I love with an applicator that sucks but that I can kind of work with is from e.l.f. And this is just the e.l.f. Clear Brow Gel from their Beautifully Bare collection. It's kind of this big silver tube right here. The brow gel inside is like almost a perfect dupe for the ABH Clear Brow Gel. It's awesome. I love it. The only thing I hate is this applicator because they give it such a tiny little applicator this is without the stopper. I took out the stopper because I wanted to use a different applicator with this, but it's so tiny and when you have brows as thick as this, it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to like do that or go in with another brush. But what I've been doing is I basically just pull it out like this, throw a glob in, and then I take my regular eyeshadow, not eyeshadow, my regular spoolie for my eyebrows, and then I use that to comb it through my brows because this is affordable and it's incredible. And so I could definitely see myself using this every day in my eyebrows. It would just be a little bit of trouble because I hate the applicator. Please just make it a regular spoolie. <laughs> if this was a regular spoolie, this would be my holy grail clear brow gel and I wouldn't need to buy anything else in the history of forever. Next, a product that has been in every single one of my tutorials, I'm pretty sure, and it's from NYX. This is the NYX Glitter Glue. It's technically called the Glitter Primer Base Perfection Brilliant, whatever. This is the best glitter glue I've ever used. And I don't use this just with glitter. I use this whenever I put anything other than a liquid glitter on my eyelid because I have incredibly hooded lids, especially if I'm not holding up my eyebrows. You see that? Super hooded. 
So today I'm wearing a liquid glitter from Stila, but if I'm we ever wearing anything powder on my lids, this goes on first. I've gone through more of these than I can count at this point. This one's actually almost empty, and I do have another backup just in my everyday makeup basket because I can't, I can't live without that thing. Seriously. If you have hooded lids and you haven't tried this out, please do. It has made so many of my big dramatic makeup looks last throughout a full day. And when I use this, almost nothing creases. Like an eyeshadow has to be like bad for it to crease when I'm wearing this. And it's affordable. I spent a bit thinking about eyeliners and I thought of like what my kind of go-to eyeliners were and I thought just a basic black and a basic white. A white to brighten and awaken and if you pat it down with a powder you can make it look a little bit, a little bit more nude. You can use it as a base primer for other colors if you want and then a black because I feel like everyone really needs a black liner. So I picked two liners. Technically these are jumbo eye pencils and they're from Milk. Milk. They're from Milk. They're not from Milk. <laughs> I'm sleepy. They're from NYX. <laughs> so the first one is in the shade Milk because it's white and the other one is just in the shade Black Bean. So just the black and the white jumbo eye pencils. I think you can also use these to prime your eyes if you're looking to either make a bright color really pop with the white or if you have a dark color and you really want to make it like show up with the black. So these are multitasking once again. They're both affordable. I think I picked up both of these from a NYX store because I have one in one of my local malls but you can get these at any drug store. You can get them online and I feel like these are kind of they cover all your bases really when it comes to eyeliner. For mascara I had to pick the best of the best but also affordable because this is something you're going to basically have to replace every three months. If you missed my big mascara roundup video, I'll throw that up on the cards. I talk a lot about mascara. <laughs> and this turned out to be one of the best of the best in that video. And that is from Essence. This is the Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. The green bottle. Make sure you get the green one because the other colors really aren't that great. This is an amazing mascara. It's affordable. It's one of the best. It's It won the top spot in that video along with an $80 mascara. So keep that in mind. <laughs> if you want to hear more about this mascara, please check out that big mascara video that I did and just take my word for it. If you haven't tried this out, please try it out. It's $3.99 and you can get it on sale. Just amazing. Finally moving on to the eyeshadow palette. I spent so much time thinking about an eyeshadow palette that I could really use every day, use up before buying like another one. So I, it might be just because I'm panning an ABH palette right now, but I could see myself using up an ABH, like using up the ABH formula. So I picked an ABH palette that was a bit more neutral. That way I had shades that could multitask, like I mentioned earlier about using shades in my eyebrows, about using shades in my hairline. So I picked the ABH Soft Glam palette. This is something I could easily see myself using every day for work. This is something I could easily see myself getting a bit more dramatic with. You have a couple of colors in here. You've got some nice shimmers. You do have a nice ratio of mattes to shimmers here. It's almost half and half. When I was thinking about something I could really reach for every day and use up, this. The plain black shade I could use in my eyebrows every day. I could also use it as liner. Same with some of the darker brown shades in here. You also have some cute like light pink shades over here. You got Dusty Rose and Tempura. And the shimmers are just beautiful. So this is the palette that I picked that I could reach for every day, use up before buying another palette. And I did have to go a bit more neutral just because I had to think of what I could wear to work every day. I couldn't get like a big blue palette and use that theoretically to work every day. But this gives me a little bit of the best of both worlds. I can get dramatic, I can get smoky, but I can also do an everyday work look. Now the last product I'm going to talk about is lipstick. And kind of the same way I thought about eyeliner, I thought about what I really needed. And two things came to mind. I really just needed a good nude lipstick and a good red lipstick. 
I know I'm not wearing either of these today, <laughs> but I am wearing the same formula. So I picked the lipstick formula I've really been reaching for the most the past couple of months, and that has been the Fenty Lip Stunna formula. So I picked the two shades, the red and the, nude, the light nude. So I picked the shades Unbutton and Uncensored. This is an amazing formula. <laughs> I've literally been reaching for this nude over anything else in my collection the most the past few weeks. And this red looks stunning does the formula is super comfortable i'm actually wearing the brown shade on right now the formula is so comfortable it lasts a day i really only have to reapply it after i've eaten a big meal or after i've been like biting my lips too much because i tend to do that when the weather gets hotter this is basically what i thought i would reach for you know being a bit more dramatic maybe on the weekend maybe on a date night go for a red and for every other day this i could have picked out more glosses and everything but for my basic everyday like makeup basket i would be reaching for a matte lipstick so there we have it that is my entire realistic makeup collection and as i mentioned before most of it was drugstore so i really want to go back to the drawing board and like dupe out the abh palette which i already have a dupe for really dupe out the lipsticks and make this a drugstore makeup starter kit because i would love to do that video i used to like binge watch those videos when i first started watching youtube because i couldn't afford shit <laughs> i really couldn't afford anything and i lived off of those videos so i'm so happy that i can now be in a position to actually do one of those videos thank you guys so much for watching let me know down below what your everyday realistic makeup collection would look like and if you agree with my choices if there's anything you would swap out or if you have any dupes for any of the higher end products that i mentioned here thank you guys for watching and i cannot wait to see you in my next video bye